what we're looking here is using different vaccines for the first and second dose for the COVID immunization schedule. And the reason we're doing that is if we can show that that is as good as the, ex the, the existing schedules where you give the same dose for the first and second, then that will be greatly increase the flexibility of the vaccine rollout across the UK and potentially globally. If you have somebody who's turning up for a, a vaccine, having received vaccine A, uh, for their first dose and their local surgery doesn't have any, only has vaccine B, then obviously it would be a great advantage if you can just go ahead and immunise them on that day. So it can be at that local level, but even uh, more broader and uh, regionally, if there was a problem with vaccine supply in one regional one, or even at a country level, it would be really beneficial to be able to actually say it doesn't matter, we can actually give the other vaccine instead. And there's plenty of precedents for this, for these kind of mixed schedules in other disease areas, such as Ebola, and uh, other licensed vaccines, even um, against HPV and hepatitis B as well. So this isn't that different in its idea. Um, and, and as I say, it can be uh, really beneficial when it comes to actually rolling out a vaccine. Everyone is already looking ahead to what happens next uh, if we have new strains and if people's immunity wanes and they need boosting, what about the third dose or maybe even the fourth dose? Um, I think there's a lot of interest in using different vaccine technologies for that, mixing up the vaccine technologies for that third, fourth dose. Uh, for the similar ideas I've just been talking about, that it might be beneficial. Certainly it will help flexibility and it might even be beneficial to do so. So we're in some ways laying the, the groundwork for the science that would look at that. Uh, if we can show it works well enough in the first two doses, then that would be encouraging to, to explore that further for the third, fourth doses, whatever. You'll always have people who have, 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 have concerns. And it's good we're held up. Uh, anyone working in vaccines is held up to scrutiny. But, um, and ultimately, these, these vaccines are approved by regulators who go through very thorough safety checks. I think the, there's been an enormously positive response to the vaccine rollout in the UK, and that's really reassuring. I think most people get it that, you know, it is better to have the vaccine than the disease. Um, and that seems to resonate with the British public. But for example, what we're doing here is not just saying, oh, here's an idea, let's just do it. We're saying, here's an idea, let's look at it in a research study, do it carefully with informed consent, 120 participants is what we're looking for here, people aged 50 and above, we will study their responses, we'll look at see if there's anything unexpected, and then we'll have that information. And on that, we can make decisions. And I think hopefully with that, we can actually build trust that these things aren't done recklessly, that they're done in a considered manner and, and with evidence.